All right. Good afternoon, everybody. James here. And uh, I want to talk about the new kind of a new uh, zero DTE strategy that I just tested out today. Uh, brand new. And it's not really I don't want to say new. Uh, you know, it's still zero DTE, uh, but it's just not a credit spread. It was a debit spread. And I want to kind of talk about it. I was just trying a little bit of new technique uh, as well as uh, a new chart to try to time these entries. So briefly, we know the difference between a credit and a debit spread. A credit spread is something that uh, you want to sell out of the money. You have a very high probability. You collect some credit. Um, but you want to do that when you have preferably, you know, over 30 IVR. Sometimes here on the zero DTE plays, we can get away with this being around 25 maybe. Uh, but once it starts getting down really low, uh, and and you can see here, SPX is sitting at, at 18. It doesn't leave much room for a decent credit without getting too close to the money. So when you have a situation like this, you will usually go ahead and do a debit spread. And I, I was doing that, you know, every couple of days I would do something like that. But uh, this time I decided to try a little bit different. Um, obviously debit spread still. But what I did here on this play is I did a 30 point wide, I think it was 30 or 35, uh, 30 point wide debit spread. Really, that was just, uh, you know, lower the cost a little bit. It's not a significant um, lowering in cost because you're going a little bit wide here. Um, but it did lower the cost a little bit. And then what I did is I, I did it out of the money um, for a potential bigger gain quicker here by it rallying into the money. So what I did is I can't really show it anymore because the expiration is not up, but I went on this morning and I bought the 3375 calls, which were right at the money. I think there may be maybe one strike below. And then I sold the 3405s. Okay. And I paid about $5.90 for that. Um, uh, right at 1037, that's Pacific, you know, standard time, my time here out in California. And I was in this trade for 12 minutes. So for 12 minutes, all right, sorry about that, guys. I had to pause for a second. Uh, so I got in the trade at 1037 my time, and I was out of this trade 12 minutes later uh, for a nice, uh, I believe it was like a 35.5% gain. Let me just double check here. Uh, that gain was, yeah, 35.5% gain on this play in 12 minutes. It was great. It was a little uh, nice winner here. It's about $210. Uh, and that being said, I left a lot of money on the table. I'm going to show you what I did, and uh, we'll go from there. So <clears throat> let me show you on a regular chart. Here's the SPX play. And we've been, we're bullish all day, right? So I started watching it when I saw... We we're getting a pullback here, and it uh, it broke right through VWAP on SPY. Okay, so I was watching it, um, and let's see, 1037, here we go. So it bounced right off the 34 EMA, and it sure enough, it bounced off, and it continued to rally and make new highs. So I really started to watch it. I was waiting for that pullback. I originally was just going for a VWAP bounce, but when it broke down, I started not to you know, consider this play anymore because it did break VWAP. But when it bounced off the 34, I paid attention to it. And I'm going to show you a different chart here. Now, this chart, this is off the futures. This is uh, the, the S&P futures forward slash ES. And this is a tick chart. This is a 512 tick chart. And this is a 1600 tick chart. So I started watching it. You know, here's the dip, right? Uh, that that I was just talking about over here. Uh, that's also this dip right here. Okay, that's this uh, that's this pullback all the way to the 34. Okay, so I started watching this chart, and when I saw it bounce off the 34, and my TMO and MACD indicators started to show green, and I started to get some indicators pointing back up. I kept an eye on it. Okay, 512 already showed a good good entry came over to the 1600 and same indicators right when i started to see the green i knew that we we're going to hit a bullish run and sure enough i got the crossovers everything started taking off again so i was a little delayed in the entry hence uh the 1037 entry but that's what i picked up 
and I just played that out and uh, it ran nice. As you can see, we ran all the way up and we actually continued to make make highs. Now I started watching it and we started to get a little bit of a pullback up here. Uh, let's see, 1049, where, where is that at? We started to see it, you know, started seeing some red candles and it was just really consolidating. And because it was a new strategy, I got out. I was out of this play at 1049. So as I started to run back up, I set an ordering at $8, which was 35, 35% profit there. Um, and it worked like a charm, you guys. And I really, really, really wish I was staying true to the chart. This 1600 absolutely had no reason for me to get out. Uh, 1049, let me bring that up over here. 1049 is like right here. Complete strength. Should not have gotten out, but you know, like I said, it was a new strategy, uh, just testing these indicators out. And as you can see, I actually probably could have held out a lot longer. This would have been my exit down here. Uh, when I checked, uh, this was trading right around ten dollars, almost eleven dollars. Uh, so as you can see, I left about two to three hundred dollars on the table with this strategy, but it works. So uh, I'm gonna start doing this a little bit more as the IV stays down around 18 and uh, if it's not a fluke and I can continue to replicate these results um, anytime we have lower IV I'm gonna start alerting these trades as well uh, as, as the credit spreads okay so that's it guys stay tuned give this video a like uh, I'll be making some more as I test it out we're gonna give Friday another go and uh, we'll see how it happens, you know, see what happens out of it. So take care, you guys. Have a great evening, and I will see you all tomorrow.